In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess. Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O oh God, author of every mercy, and of all goodness, who in fasting, prayer, and almsgiving have shown us a remedy for sin, look graciously on this confession of our lowliness, that we who are bowed down by our conscience may always be lifted up by your mercy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. In those days, in their midst thirst for water, the people grumbled against Moses, saying, Why did you ever make us leave Egypt? Was it just to have us die here of thirst with our children and our livestock? So Moses cried out to the Lord, What shall I do with this people? A little more and they will stone me. The Lord answered Moses, Go over there in front of the people, along with some of the elders of Israel, holding in your hand as you go the staff with which you struck the river. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock in Horeb. Strike the rock, and the water will flow from it for the people to drink. This Moses did in the presence of the elders of Israel. The place was called Massa and Meribah, because the Israelites quarreled there and tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord in our midst or not? The word of the Lord. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Come, let us sing joyfully to the Lord. Let us acclaim the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us joyfully sing psalms to him. If today you hear his voice, Harden not your hearts. Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord who made us. For he is our God, and we are the people he shepherds, the flock he guides. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Oh, that today you would hear his voice. Harden not your hearts as at Meribah, as in the day of Massa in the desert, where your fathers tempted me, they tested me, though they had seen my works. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ through whom we have gained access by faith to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in hope of the glory of God. 
And hope does not disappoint. Because the love of God has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. For Christ, while we were still helpless, died at the appointed time for the ungodly. Indeed, only with difficulty does one die for a just person, though perhaps for a good person one might even find courage to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus came to a town of Samaria, Samaria called Sychar, near the plot of land that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there. Jesus, tired from his journey, sat down there at the well. It was about noon. A woman of Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone into the town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How can you, a Jew, ask me, a Samaritan woman, for a drink? For Jews use nothing in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God and who was saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you do not even have a bucket, and the cistern is deep. Where then can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us this cistern and drank from it himself with his children and his fox? Jesus answered and said to her, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I shall give will never thirst. The water I shall give will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so so that I may not be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. (laughs) Jesus said to her, Go, call your husband and come back. The woman answered and said to him, I do not have a husband. And Jesus answered her, You are right in saying, I do not have a husband. For you have had five husbands, and the one you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, Sir, I can see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain. But you people say that the place to worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Believe me, woman, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You people worship what you do not understand. We worship what we understand because salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. And indeed, the Father seeks such people to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that the Messiah is coming, the one called the Christ. When he comes, he will tell us everything. Jesus said to her, I am he, the one who is speaking with you. At that moment, his disciples returned and were amazed that he was talking with a woman. But still no one said, what are, you, what are you looking for? Or why are you talking with her? The woman left her water jar and went into town and said to the people, Come, see a man who told me everything I have done. Could he possibly be the Christ? They went out of the town and came to him. Meanwhile, the disciples urged him, Rabbi, eat. But he said to them, I have food to eat of which you do not know. So the disciples said to one another, Could someone have brought him something to eat? Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of the one who sent me and to finish his work. Do you not say in four months the harvest will be here? I tell you, look up and see the fields ripe for the harvest. 
The reaper is already receiving payment and gathering crops for eternal life so that the sower and reaper can rejoice together. For here the saying is verified that one who sows another one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap what you did not work for. Others have done the work and you are sharing the fruits of their work. Many of the Samaritans of that town began to believe in him because of the word of the woman who testified. He told me everything I have done. When the Samaritans came to him, they invited him to stay with them, and he stayed there two days. Many more began to believe in him because of his word, and they said to the woman, We no longer believe because of your word, for we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this is truly the Savior of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Our Father is good, He's loving, and He's powerful. You and I have access to our Father's heart. We can find rest in our Father's heart. We can know our Father's heart through contact with His Word, with the Bible, participating in God's actions and movements spiritually at this most holy Mass. But we can also come to know and experience the Father's love in the here and in the now. And this is because Jesus is alive. And He promised that He would be with us always as we learn to invite and welcome Jesus to be with us in the here and now, to walk with us. We have access to our Father's heart, even in the here and now, even if the earth were to quake and to tremble. I want to offer you a powerful image of our Father and His love, His power, and His goodness that Scott Hahn shares through a story in his book, A Father Who Keeps His Promises. I'd invite you to close your eyes, to listen, to use your imagination as we're going to, through this real-life story, have access to our Father's heart. Quote, Everybody felt it. A moment of eerie silence. A low rumble, and then the ground began to shake. Buildings swayed and buckled, then collapsed like houses of cards. Less than four minutes later, over 30,000 were dead from a magnitude 8.2 earthquake that rocked and nearly flattened Armenia in 1989. In the muddled chaos, a distressed father bolted through the winding streets leading to the school where his son had gone earlier that morning. The man couldn't stop thinking about the promise he had given his son many times. No matter what happens, Armand, I will always be there. He reached the site where the school had been, but saw only a pile of rubble. He just stood there at first, fighting back tears, and then took off, stumbling over debris toward the east corner where he knew his son's classroom had been. With nothing but his bare hands, he started to dig he was desperately pulling up bricks and pieces of wall plaster while others stood by watching in forlorn disbelief. He heard someone growl, Forget it, mister, they're all dead. He looked up, flustered, and replied, You can grumble or you can help me lift these bricks. Only a few pitched in, and most of them gave up once their muscles began to ache. But the man couldn't stop thinking about his son. He kept digging and digging for hours, 12 hours, 18 hours, 24 hours, 36 hours. Finally, into the 38th hour, he heard a muffled groan from under a piece of wallboard. He seized the board, pulled it back, and cried, Armand! From the darkness came a slight, shaking voice. Papa? Other weak voices began calling out. As the young survivors stirred beneath the still uncleared rubble, 
Gasps and shouts of bewildered relief came from the few onlookers and parents who remained. They found 14 of the 33 students still alive. When Armand finally emerged, he tried to help dig until his surviving classmates were out. Everybody standing there heard him as he turned to his friends and said, See, I told you my father wouldn't forget us. That's the kind of faith we need. Because that's the kind of father we have. There's a place where you and I can experience and be established in this amazing and fleshy relationship with our Father. It may seem crazy, but this place is beneath the cross of His Son. Mother Church is clear. Every cry that has and will arise from the human heart, from your heart, was given voice by God's Son as He hung upon the cross. Every suffering, every illness, every wound, bondage, abuse, betrayal, has been given a voice from the lips of our Savior Jesus. Jesus, your God, your Savior, your friend, has faced absolutely every ugly and evil thing this world has to offer, everything that this world could ever bring against you, and nothing, absolutely nothing, could stand against Him. And our Father, just like the Father in the story we heard, He answered the cry of His Son, Our Father did not abandon His Son, and He'll never abandon us. Our Father is good, He's loving, and He's powerful. And our Father answered the cry of His Son. He answered the cry of every human heart by raising His Son, Jesus, from the dead. Jesus trampled upon sin and death, and Jesus is alive. You and I can experience, and we can be in relationship with God's Son. And it is our Savior, Jesus, who alone can reveal to us our Father's heart, and who can give us access to our Father's heart. In the Gospel of St. John, chapter 16, during the Last Supper, Supper, a moment you and I are about to live and participate in at this altar, Jesus said these words, I have said this to you, that in me you may have peace. Keep in mind, he's about to be abandoned, mocked, spat upon, crowned with thorns, and crucified. In the world you face persecution, but take courage. I have conquered the world. My brothers and sisters, in this moment that we're living in, God our Father Himself is crying out. He's calling each of you by name, especially those of us that are anxious, those of us that are worried, those of us that are losing our hope, those of us that have been buried under a pile of rubble. Our Father is not cold, He's not distant, and He's not indifferent. He's calling you by name, and He's inviting you to turn, to turn towards Him, to draw near to Him. I want to invite all of you in these days where For those of us that are going to have more time at home, more time as a family, to seek refuge in God's most holy word. And in particular, I want to invite all of the families of our parish to put to memory St. Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 8. So as a family, 
take this chapter of Scripture, pray with it, study it, and put it to memory. Then I want you to begin um, reciting it together as a family um, in a dramatic way. Proclaim this beautiful proclamation of the good news of Jesus Christ as a family. And moving forward, we're going to find ways to share what each of our families were able to do. It's in this chapter of Scripture, St. Paul's letter to Romans chapter 8, where St. Paul says this, No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. My dear brothers and sisters, let us open up the ears of our heart to hear our Father's voice, our Father who calls us by name. Let us allow the Father to come to our rescue. Let us allow the Father to pick us up to his loving embrace. And let us place our lives, our trust, and our hope in our Father. To wrap things up, I want to share with you a very helpful teaching that comes from Holy Mother Church to help us to live through these moments where we're not going to have access to God's most holy sacraments, to the sacraments of Holy Mother Church. Mother Church, when she talks about the sacrament of baptism and its necessity for our salvation, she says this, God has bound salvation to the sacrament of baptism, but he himself is not bound by his sacraments. Especially for those of you who would desperately love to go to confession and might not be able to, God's grace and mercy are not bound by the sacraments. We are bound by them. What does this mean? You and I can cry out to our Father for mercy, and we can experience God's mercy. When the opportunity becomes available and presents itself, we're going to go to confession. But God doesn't want you to think that you have to live away from him until you have that opportunity to go to confession. God's grace is not bound by the sacraments. The other thing, too, even to experience being in communion with Jesus Christ, on our website we've offered you some resources for making a spiritual communion. You and I can welcome Jesus into our hearts. We can experience the love, the presence of Jesus in our hearts, and we can experience that spiritual communion. So let us arm ourselves with God's Word. Let us seek refuge in the Word of God. And let us continue to welcome and invite Jesus to be with us and to be in our hearts. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And now, as his beloved children, let us stand as we make our profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, 
who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now, with the confidence of beloved sons and daughters, we lift our eyes up to our Father as we give voice to our petitions. We pray for Pope Francis, all the bishops throughout the world, particularly Archbishop Bignoran, as they, as they lead the church through this uh, chaotic time, that as the world sees the church, it sees a peace that uh, is beyond all understanding. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the church that her members may announce the good news of the gospel to those who live in material, moral, and spiritual destitution, especially at this time. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those preparing to enter the church at Easter, that they may find strength and courage in the Lord Jesus as they continue their Lenten pilgrimage. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who hold public office and for peace and protection for all who risk their lives to establish peace among nations, we pray that this uh, opportunity is seen as a time to come together as a nation, as people of God, as children of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who thirst for the waters of life, that they be drawn to the gospel and the sacraments of the church, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all families, especially those of our parish community, that they may grow in holiness and love for the Lord, and that um, this opportunity to spend more time together draws them, uh, draws them ever closer to each other and to Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace this week to give joyful and courageous testimony like the Samaritan woman to Jesus and his mercy, we pray to the Lord. Lord this Holy Mass is offered in a special way for all of the families of Our Lady of Good Counsel Parish, the living and deceased members of our family. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord our Father, we place these petitions in our very lives and to thy loving and mighty hands through Christ our Lord. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all of his holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, with these sacrificial offerings and grant that we who beseech pardon for our own sins may take care to forgive our neighbor through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For when he asked the Samaritan woman for water to drink, he had already created the gift of faith within her, and so ardently did he thirst for her faith that he kindled in her the fire of divine love. And so we too give you thanks, and with the angels praise your mighty deeds as we acclaim, Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power, and in earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts 
we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us of the world by your cross and resurrection. You have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Anne and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession, your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Alan, our Bishop, Bishop Battersby, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There, we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say,
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. On you stay. Vitoris peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, vitoris peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, vitoris peccata Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, through your death gave life to the world, free us by this your most holy body and blood from all of our sins and from every evil. Keep us always faithful to your commandments and never let us be parted from you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to enter under my roof, but only say the word, soul shall be healed. The sparrow finds a home, and the swallow a nest for her young. By your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God, blessed are they who dwell in your house, forever singing your praise. Let us pray. As we receive the pledge of things yet hidden in heaven and are nourished while still on earth 
with the bread that comes down from on high, we humbly entreat you, O Lord, that what is being brought about in us in mystery may come to true completion through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. My dear parish family, please know that we continue to lift you and your families up. And in the days to come, we'll be providing you with spiritual nourishment and spiritual protection. So please keep your eyes and your ears open um, for our different media outlets as we're going to have an opportunity to provide you with spiritual nourishment and spiritual protection. The Lord be with you. And And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world in the ruin of souls. Amen.